Hi, it's Street Professor Skookum One. I guess it's not great light, but the thing in the background is what I'm going to be talking about, I guess. Partly, and what else used to be there? So I'm on, uh, I'm the Street Professor Skookum One, and I've decided to sort of rename the vlog a little bit of this series of them called Behind the Granite Curtain, which is Alan Fotheringham's term for the Rocky Mountains, and it's interesting how much you in the rest of Canada don't know about us, and how much the rest of the world doesn't know about this. the uttermost west, what Alan, what was called Lotus Land, and it was also Alan Father Graham that came up with that name. I won't go on about Foth. He's a great writer. You should look into it. Look at Len Norris, the cartoonist, and a lot of extra certain naming colonists, okay? So I'm going to tell, I'm going to talk about the founding of the colony, as I promised various people I would do. And just some things here about the harbor and the buildings you see, I guess, at first. And I was going to talk about riding size. I told a lot of people in the malls, I got a lot of nice reception. I got some weird reception because of my hair and my looks. I won't go on about that. But anyway, uh, it's why I'm not doing this live. I got a problem with the girl at Bridget. So anyways, I'm large and scary and I was loud because I'm over with. So anyways, it doesn't matter. I've talked to customer service and I'll be talking to the phone company. I don't want to badmouth the store, right, because the owner was nice to me, but she couldn't handle me. Never mind, I'm talking too much about myself. Okay, but it was part of this thing about the class thing here, that people like me are seen as somehow dangerous. With that building behind me, let me turn a bit here. That building behind me, I wish I had zoom on this, is the British Columbia Parliament Building. And the electrification, I believe, was done by Grace McCarthy under W.A.C. Bennett. The buildings are very beautiful, the inside is beautiful, the legislative chamber is gorgeous, there's different colored stones. Sorry, I'm being stable. I, somebody, I need to get one of those uh, uh, study cam things. So I'll bring this down and not hold it so long, and just have that behind me. And you know, I haven't had time to go to, like, uh, Kaylin, Kaylin uh, Harris, Kaylin, uh, sorry Kaylin, I'm forgetting your name. Uh, uh, anyway, there's a coffee shop. He's the green candidate in James Bay. So James Bay, might as well talk about James Bay. Because see the buildings there, right? So where I am is the corner of Doug Government, a wharf, which comes around from that way, where the Tourist Information Center is. The Union Club is over that way, which is like, or is it the Empire Club? It's the equivalent of the Vancouver Club and the, and the Terminal City Club in Vancouver. It's the Gentleman's Club. The old white guys with lots of money. So all the, all the robber barons are in there. And I'm watching who I'm talking to the closer I get to the apartment building. I have bad things to say about, you know. The FPTP government in power at present, the way they're governing, considering they're relying on, relying on a, you know, a fairly moderate agreement with a, a party that's given them power. They should respect their beliefs of that other party more. And I won't go on about that. But I'll talk about the history of the colony. So the, from here along to, to there, there is that way is the Empress which is a CPR railway hotel sorry I can't see what I'm seeing I should get up while I'm doing this I guess it's easier so anyways sorry folks I'm just learning the hang of this all right so this is a beautiful inner harbor right and I used to pet a cab off in front of the Empress there and there were inner harbor and then over there Sorry for the waveriness, okay? Let me hold it up here. That'll be better. I'm holding it higher on the shaft. So that, see that building with the green lights? Now that's, uh, now, I think that's the, in front of it is the undersea garden, I think still, and uh, that used to be the railway station for the train from here to, to, that was meant to be for the transcontinental railway, which Victoria had been promised by Sir John A. Macdonald. Another case where a politician promised somebody something and didn't deliver and instead delivered it to someone else. And big time was giving Vancouver, Granville Island, Broad Inlet and English Bay and the site of Vancouver largely to the CPR. Or allowing them to buy it. When Victoria, New West uh, and Port Moody had all been bought up. They didn't want to go there. So that's the Empress. We got top of the Empress in there. The Empress is a beautiful hotel. It's probably partly in the shadows. Yeah, there we go. Mike, do, hold it this way, Mike. I'm holding it high up the shaft again. I feel like holding it that way. So, back to me, that's this, and I'll turn around again. So that's where I am. So in front of the legislature there, I'll turn around so I can't see it, even though it's beautiful to talk to it, as I talk to it. I'll try and sit 
and sit so that that uh, I keep it in view. Right? So that site was also a causeway. It was a it was like a uh, a log bridge, you know, over James Bay. That was James Bay, and the neighborhood beyond that is James Bay, and that was Governor Douglas's farm. And there was a lot of controversy about the governor using that for the site of. Uh, not this legislature. I think it's the original one. They were called the bird cages. So they're quite, they're known for being leaky and wet. And it's like the stars are a really nice large salon or small ballroom. If you go on UBC Open Collections and you search, I think it was the 1901 legislature, there's a shot of all the members. That was a nice kind of club room, you know, 27 members, 25. So anyway, that was one of the first touch, touchy scandals, the governor cashing in. That was not the only one of the governor, of later governors, of, this, of, their, of all the colonial officials, which that's a whole thing I'll do later and another thing after the election's over, because that doesn't pertain to the FPTP system, that's just corruption founded British Columbia. There am I? I'm, I'm doing it. There we go. Sorry, folks. Now I see it. Okay, so I need to be like this. That's fine. Well, less, more of the beauty of Victoria, less of this ugly old man, all right? So anyways, you know, Victoria is nice. I find it a lot more conservative and stiff. I feel the pressure to tie up my hair, but that's okay. What I'm talking about now is inside that, that larger chamber now and inside that smaller chamber called the bird cages. So go look it up. It's quite nice inside. They look kind of like, they look like bird cages. And they were under, I think over to the right there. I don't think they were on the side of where the, maybe they were the other side? No, but the new one, they were still sat until the new building opened and they were trying out. And Cary Castle was another place where, I don't know, was that a left hand governor's place before government had spoken? I don't know, I don't know enough about the history of Victoria, I look forward to looking, living here and knowing it better. But I do find it more, not just British, but even the young people are more conservative and wary and stuff. It always has had that different, more stiffness, but it is a more relaxed city and quieter. And the people I do talk to are quite receptive. And they're glad I'm over here, like everyone has been on this trip, all the staff on the ferry. And I won't recount the story of fast. I've decided, you know, I don't care. CBC hung up on me. I don't even bother calling Global. Why should I call Global? Why should I call that for the sun? They're, they're the, the machine that's kept the bastards going. And the Taiyi is just part of that. So my thoughts about Morno funding NATPO and the chains going to the independents, well, the, the National Observer's done a good job so far. Glacier Media's done a good job so far, being fair newspaper chain and not taking biased side of business and politics, just reporting and helping people get their communities together and, and talking about actual news instead of dead babies and car crashes. You know, the formula for the, everything they'll tell you to keep you from knowing about politics is all about the stuff that disgusts you. So that's why they don't want you to watch the news. The little bits of news that you get, they don't want you knowing anything about what's going on. It's very simple. Adbusters is all about this. Adbusters is a great magazine, you guys. Kudos, man. Kudos, all right? Anybody who's never seen Adbusters should go find it. And Mother Jones, I wish we had you up here in Canada. I'm going to tag you when I post this. Uh, 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 Stephen Colbert, you know. You should check it out, dude, the stuff I'm talking about. This is this is Dixie North, man, the Social Credit Party. Dixieland was their favorite music, you know. You know, and, and, and for the conventions, and they're all fat old white people with white shoes, right? right? Doing their, one of the most racist and you know they beat the duke of boris you know and they raped the land and all that shit you know and car dealers and all i won't go on about the social credit is all there in british columbia they're all characters too but anyway yeah the legislature was bitten lit, lit by it was built in 1904 by Rat, francis rattenberry i think also built the hotel which was one of the great real world hotels you can it's really nice in there i don't know who owns it now right and so so uh it's a grand hotel, it's famous in the world, uh, and it has like a really beautiful conservatory. Anyway, Rattenbury's a great architect, he died, there's this famous scandal, him and his wife, oh, it's, look him up, Francis Rattenbury. Anyway, so the legislature is quite beautiful, and Grace McCarthy, <clears throat> what was she under Bennett when she did that? She's under W.A.C. Bennett, the old man. The wacky, we call them, W.A.C. Can't wonder ministry was at the time, but British Columbia had electric, abundant electric hydropower. You know, and they did show projects like that. So the same was the lighting. The Guinness family paid for the lighting. Or the Guinness family paid for the lighting of the Lionsgate Bridge, and then McCarthy, BC High. I can't remember who electrified it. My dad, 
my dad, I'm not bragging to the family, okay, but, you know, dad, dad did Bridge River and Chekamoose and shit like that, sorry, did, and, and uh, Wall Each and Grand Ruskin and built Bridge River. Anyway, so, he, uh, he did the, well, the first wiring, the electrical lighting of the tennis courts at Stanley Park back in, I don't know when it was, but when, when he came to BC, one of his first jobs as an electrician. Anyway, so that was my dad. But anyway, they won't go about the family. So, all the power in BC is political. A couple of times I made the mistake of saying electrical reform. We need that too, electrical reform? Oh yeah. Yeah, you know. And it was the NDP, Rex. Who took, lost a chance, he gave the U.S. our downstream benefits, which we waited so many decades for. You did a deal with someone in the States. You, I don't even know the details, and we kept knowing the details about that, just like we are about BC Rail. You, I don't know where the casino privatization came from. All the casinos were supposed to be for sports culture and, you know, arts and education and stuff. And what are they now? They're international money laundering. That's just like our real estate markets. So we did that. That's all FTP governments did that including the one of 91-2001, when actually, contrary to liberal social credit propaganda and the press propaganda and the efforts of the mining industry to have BC blacklisted, they were growth years in British Columbia, booms. But the booms means that that's the beginning of, of the foreign housing market that became the laundry machine. So I won't go on about the NDP, I wanted to talk about the colony. I've heard a lot of complaints about riding size and stuff. So I'm going to try and be really brief now because I want to end this and go find any I'm hungry still. i got to get back to Cordova Bay and get up early and do everything I haven't done today and I still don't have a phone. So there we go. Mike, hold it like that again. Yeah. It's against my body and stabilize it. Yeah, it's a beautiful city, Victoria, and uh, it can be very beautiful, dismal in the rain. But lots of nice places to hang out, and libraries, archives, and cool people, interesting people. A lot of really straightforward, middle-class, ordinary people, but a lot of really interesting older people. I ran into a crowd of Solidarity people who went, oh yeah, right, they're spreading the word tonight. So I clicked off Solidarity, I kicked off the Duke of Boys. There was an older Romanian woman at a very fancy jewelry store in the mall, and I talked to her, I asked her where she was from, I told her what I knew about Romania, it was quite a bit for, you know, I love quite a bit about anything for Canadian, okay? And we talked. I told her what was up. She says, oh, okay, because she, she's from a country that didn't have democracy. She knows cheatery when she sees it. Okay, a lot of, all you immigrant people that are watching this, and I'm going to have this run through Dragon Naturally Speak in subtitle and give it to people to translate, but I've also asked a few people tonight, including people from Kerala and other parts of India, to just do it in your own languages, Chinese, whatever, right? Tell people the story about how they didn't want people to vote. All right? And so that means you should vote. So I'm back to the story about the early colony. I wanted to talk about the legisla legislature. I can't remember how many f original seats there is. So I should know because I did the Wikipedia, I did the, um, let me just turn it so you don't have to be looking at me talking about myself. I did the Wikipedia, I did the, the I'll turn that a bit more, get myself out of it, there we go. I'm such an ugly old man. So Wikipedia, I did the, uh, if you go to the first historical elections of BC, from 87 or 1871, I don't know how many years I got to. I laid out the seats so she could see how many seats in the legislature, side to side, left to right, like like seated. The later pages were done by other people, they're not as easy to look at. But yeah, you can see, you know, there's different rides. I think it's about 24 or something like that. And BC had, I don't know how many thousand people. 60,000, maybe 70, something like that. And federally, there was only like so many riders. Trutney, Caribou, Lillooet, no, Lillooet's only for provincial. I'm trying to think of the other, oh, Yale, the Yale 3, Yale Andrews. Anyway, there's only a few federal writings and only so many provincial writings. Comox, talk about large writings. I told somebody this up in telling some of my history lessons on the street. Comox, which is from Comox, which is older than Courtney. All the way to the Yukon border, which was then, then the Breezy border as of the things that, you know, there was a certain year when the border was expanded from the Finley River to the 60th parallel. Long story. So anyway, I wanted to get the building in view again. I think there were in that, in that, in that, from what I remember of that page, maybe that's the number of 
people who voted for the winner. I don't think so. I think it was, they were 27 voters. None of the natives, of course. And they were Chinese, maybe working the fish boats, you know, and there were Norwegians around. They weren't. None of the Norwegians voted, even though they had founded the fishing industry. You know, Hans Lars Helgeson. I don't know what part of Norway he's from. It's a common name. He founded the. The reason that Port McNeil and Bellacula and the ports along the coast looked like Norwegian ports is because Norwegians built them. Okay, my people were. They are my people. You know, the Norse, the Norsemen, Norman, we call right. We call ourselves the Norman. I'm learning the language again. You know, I know bits and I'm becoming. You know, I want to go to Norway. I want to come. Norway. It's called it come. It's helping me. Yeah, no, you will come to Norway. I'm saying to Norway, I want to come to Norway. <coughs> so I hope to go there as a musician. And to see, I want to show my grandfather's photos to the people from the place he's from about the amazing work he did. Uh, so anyways, all the ridings were like that. Lillewitt had, Victoria had 149 electors and had three seats. But he had to be, I think it's 135, it was lowered to 25 in some year. You had to be 35 and own property and a British subject to vote. So all the Americans didn't vote, of course, all Norwegians, Germans, all, until they naturalized. Many did, the Germans naturalized. Many of the Italians did, the Norwegians. They all naturalized, including Hans Lars Helgeson, who was the first non-British MLA. In the, in the, he started the North, the North Coast Fishery. He'd been on the, he's been on the Fraser Gold Rush. Any, any family of Hans Lars Helgeson who hears this, I'd love to hear more about your family, your, your, your ancestor. I wonder, you know, all Norwegians were related. So anyways, all these ridings were massive. It took several days, several weeks to vote because people had to ride in to vote, you know? So there were certain weeks, certain areas had different riding. And, and, and I think there was also, not so, that was funny, but it was a public ballot, you know? So it was very different. I read up on the early elections, but the way the house was run, there weren't any parties. And these guys all knew each other from ranching and mining and commerce and trade and all this. Transport was a big thing, the, the freight companies and the steamboats, all the big money was in the house, like it always is in BC. But these guys are the ones that, that decided to steal all the land, let's, let's call it theft, steal all the land from our the First Nations people who are your friends and neighbors and really nice people with a rich culture. I encourage you to go and you know discover it right, wherever you are, your neighbors. Anyway, so they became, it became too unstable for the banks, but also the times were unstable. There were difficulties in the Klondike and there's a sequence of events with Lieutenant Governor McInnes and his Premier Turner, and I keep on the screen if it's Semlin or Pryor, I think it's Semlin, and then Joe Martin. Go look up the Joe Martin government. It's a really interesting story. I actually like the telling by, I'll have to post it as a comment, uh, he's a conservative called Les Lena, L-E-Y-N-E, -E, on Scandals in BC History. I can't remember the title. And his account of it is good, right? That This is a guy that had a, had a three-member caucus and held government as long as McInnes let him. <laughs> right? And McInnes had turfed two good premiers before for furious reasons. Where McInnes came from, what his motivations were, I want to know. So that i got to do some more digging in the books I know of, but I don't have time right now. Right now I'm, I'm rallying the vote. I want, I want PR for British Columbia. I want everybody to have, you know, a, a more democratic Christmas and a more inclusive, a more inclusive holiday season for all voters. And I don't know, maybe we should always do Christmas as the voting season because it brings families together to talk about things, you know, and decide decide how better can we run this world, how better can we help our neighbor? Because all religions I've been talking to, all the, all the great religions, each and every one of them, talk about taking care of the poor and taking care of the old. And I think native common law it should be part of the, our, our provincial constitution. I want a rewriting of the provincial constitution. After PR, I want the PR house, however it's constituted. And I hope it's green. I believe it will be. That, that, and this is scaring the hell out of the NDP and they're gonna scream, Nazis, 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 they're gonna make hell out of me. They're gonna call me names. They're gonna dredge up people from my past. But that's the truth of the matter. It's not about, it's not about Nazis they're worried about. So, you know, they're worried about the Greens. And they're worried about the Tories. Justin Greenwood, I like you. Well, I welcome you to politics. You're a nice young guy. Okay, good to voice that side of the void. We need to do that. But we need you also to cooperate with the Green future. We're not left nor right. We want to move forward with technology. 
We want to leave the old technology. That simple. So anyways, people, that's the story of the colony a little bit, okay? I'll get more into like the things that went on, the gold rushes. I want to do the gold rushes and go to the sites and have the maps, you know, and things like that, and documents. The lot BC is so beautiful, and this is only part of it. So uh, I'll enjoy living here if I can get over here. And it was worth coming here just to do this for you. So those are the beautiful British Columbia Parliament buildings. Please come visit Victoria. And there are many things happened there. And Rattenbury's architecture is amazing. The, the, the courthouse in Vancouver is it's now the art gallery. It's one of his. I can't go on about him. He's a whole separate video. And lots of beautiful architecture, nice gardens, beautiful restaurants. Quiet but dignified people with lots of nice bookstores and restaurants and a funky feel to it. Right now a little chilly for this old man. I didn't bring the heavier coat I have. Do I have another sweater? I might have in my bag. I should sign this off so I can upload it and get to a bus. So I wanted you to see the crucible of power here and talk a little bit about the founding of the colony and then how the colony was always corrupt. And then when power, when the one party system, which I'd like to do a whole video on after the election was over and how it came to be what happened was the Martin government, Lieutenant Governor McInnes, was used to parachute in a conservative center from Quebec, as LG, and, and to preside over the transition to a political party system, which was the McBride government of 1903. There was an interim government, I guess it was prior, if, I guess it was prior because it wasn't someone. And the downfall of the prior government is all kind of shifty too. And the, how, why the conservatives used, you know, why the liberals who were from outside BC, McInnes wasn't from here, Martin wasn't from here. All the people BC were shut out, right? And then the, they used the conservative element, used that as a reason to bring in the party system whereby they could lock down power and start getting even more corrupt. You see, that's why the party system was imported with FPTP. Proportional representation was al already actively discussed within the British Empire at the time. No, no, they stayed with FPTP here. Eventually they lowered the voting age and the property requirement went for universal subjects. 1916, the woman got the vote. That's a whole story in itself. They banned the liquor and the men came home for more. You can think what happened, right? Anyway, that's a whole video someday. But yeah, so this is a beautiful inner harbor. I need to go over to Douglas Street and find a bus, get north, get a phone happening, or get to a Wi-Fi zone. But I've done my work for the day. I'm really sorry, Kaylin. I did, Kaylin, I didn't get to meet you. Mr. Weaver, I got your number, but I couldn't get my phone happening. Uh, it was a situation that happened. But that's all right, you know, I did some good talking, I met some people, I mobilized some more people. Lots of people got what I'm saying, right? It's a quieter city and some people are more reticent to talk to me, or they're kind of stiff or smart or joke off about it. I heard drunk, trying to, he was always drunk here. So anyways, uh, I just want other people to, to, I don't want to lead this. I don't want to lead this. I want to tell you the story that you don't know about the province. I'm trying to try and keep going, try and keep my focus, so. Send me some encouragement, you know, I mentioned some things. You want to know more about something I mentioned? Comment that you like something I mentioned. Like, what is that more? Tell me more about that. Because whether it's a solidarity crisis, what Campbell did, what the NDP did, what Bill Jr. did, what WAC did, I don't have to look into Barrett, right? It's always union stuff. The coalition. You know, after McBride, the swing back and forth. Go look for a book called The Newspaper in Murray's by Georgina Cadell. It's about her parents, Murray, Ma and George Murray. I don't want to get too far digress, but I'm trying to give you books to look into. And I've told everybody about Dan, Dan Marshall's Claiming the Land, Eldorado and New British Claiming. I want to see that book going to fifth grade. I want to see it as a textbook, like in, hundred, in first year university, at least, if not grade 12, about what happened here in the Canyon War. Although the, maybe the more readable book, Don Hawke, McGowan's War. So there's so much of British Columbia history that you need to know and how it got as corrupt as it is and wake up to the corruption because yeah, the rest of the world is watching me. Down the US, Europe, you know, Asia. There's deep, dark, nasty secrets in British Columbia that have been hidden from the world, you know, a beautiful place in the world, but man, you should have seen it 50 years ago. Anyways, Victoria is still beautiful. It's still a nice place to go. I hope to find a poem here. So anyway, Skookum One Street Professor, gonna go find some eats, warm up, grab a bus, go home to my friend's place, get up early, Come in, I see the aforementioned gentleman, Kaylin Harris. Oh, I got the name right. <laughs> it comes out of me the wrong way. I thought it was here. Anyway, and Andrew Weaver and the Green Party. And, and I don't know, I hope to find a certain law professor, a friend of mine. I don't want to embarrass him by naming him out at UVic. But he's retired. I'll find him. And, or someone else to, to get a rip, to extend the vote.
or get the judge to rule that according to the Constitution everyone has an equal right and an equal opportunity to vote. People who got mailed the ballots got an unfair opportunity. Everybody who didn't get it understands. So there needs to be more time to vote. There need to be ballots. And you know what? It's Christmas season. People go to the mall. Have balloting stations at the mall. Or, right, especially right now, around campuses, because people are in class. And students are mobilizing. But you know, you need a mobile polls, go to the shelters, tent cities. I'm serious. This is a matter of human rights and electoral rights. And I'll be writing the UN about it if there's not something fixed about it. Right? This is not good democracy. This is a sham. If it, all these people aren't given votes to, and it's something that affects their future. That's my lead line when I talk to them. You know there's a, bit of a vote going on that affects your future. You need to take action and go to BC services and vote. I get angry about it for your sake. So do please. They didn't. They excluded from the vote. From from the vote. You see what that means. They didn't want you voting. So that means you need to vote for the change. Okay, it's that simple. And I won't get into. I think this whole process was set up to fail, and you know it just should have been. Let's do it. Everybody wants it. We all know that. Go through this charade and let the liars try and shoot it down with money and lies. How many? What are the ad industries and lobbyists are making right now? That's what I want to know. True enough, right? How much is the other side, the ad industry, cashing in on the money that there may be a great gravy growing in? We've got to stop this, people, and everybody's hearing me tonight. Human tide. You know what I mean? Human tide. Talk to your friends. Go find the street people. Go anybody that's from the new, might be like they knew, with an accent, they might be Russian, Polish, Romanian, like ladies name. Okay? And she looked dark, I thought she was Persian. You know? You never know where someone's from. Oh, hey, by the way, how, you know, I'm just doing this. You know, some of them do a good job, obviously. But the older people who are Europeans, they get it, because they've seen a lot, especially East Europeans. Anybody here with an accent? Or anybody who looks like from a minority community, young or old, and then starts to want for their kids in the future, they want to work for a company. Everybody that stops and listens other than people that freak out because of my looks, or they're drunk, or whatever, right? They get it. They get it. And I want the human tide to keep on growing so I can go back to the mountains and write some music, write some music. Right, move over here. You know, I want to move over here again. It's a nice place. I need some sunshine and some archives. Maybe finished by degrees. Anyway, I, I got to finish it so that I can upload this later. It's probably 20 minutes already. I'm not, oh, I need to get it cut. Have a very good night. Okay, I like doing this. If, if you like what I'm doing, please like. Okay, I'm not trying to make money. I'm trying to educate. I've got so much knowledge to give away. I've given my whole life away for free. If I could empty my brain, I'd be a happy man. I've got too much inside it. And I want to share it with the people that need to know it, which is the new people, the new generations. And for the sake of the guys on the street who are casualties of FTPP. That's my big thing. The, the people on the street are the casualties of FPTP. They're not the casualties of immigration. They're casualties of the immigration of dirty money. Those towers in the sky and their million dollar suites. When somebody's sleeping in the rainbow, that's sickening. And a lot of people hear me say that. So I ain't a communist, I'm just a man who sees common sense, and I'm in my home. Free Columbia. Now this isn't the undiscerned territories, this is Songhees territory. The, the village used to be over there, I can't see it, I'll show you in the daytime. This big fancy hotel, they sell, they sold, they got money, they had a treaty. Uh, the Royal Oak, which is think, somewhere I think, something like that over, it's sort of north of Esquimalt, the far end of Gorge, no, of the inner, of the inner, inner high Esquimalt basin or something in the western communities, which is a traffic nightmare, I'd like to do a thing on the rail lines and my thoughts on transit here and other matters on transportation in British Columbia. And I'm hoping to find, you know, I'm not a businessman, I've got great ideas. But that's the thing, you need people with ideas and young people with ideas who think of things that I won't think of. But I know a thing, I know of things, science and the environment stuff, we all need to learn. This needs to be a green British Columbia, this needs to be a better British Columbia. This needs to be a fully democratic British Columbia where British Columbians get a fair say in the vote, not a vote that allows foreign countries to own our politicians and rape our land and make us poor. We shove off colonialism. This is a vote against colonialism. My next video will be about the nature of colonialism in British Columbia and the nature of the Crown. All right, but we've got to change that. To, to, I want to keep on saying STV because that's what this ballot should have been. I know at least three people 
who didn't vote for PR because they're pissed off that Oregon didn't put SCV on the ballot. I won't go on about the ballot. The main thing now is just vote for PR. You don't have to make a choice, okay? Mobilize. I hope this guy. I hope, I hope this gets up fast so I can. I gotta find a video cutter so I can put this up fast. I gotta ask somebody from somebody in Victoria for a video cutter who take these videos and make the bites of the things I'm doing. Is that the last thing I said? Most people won't hear that because it's long. But I hope everybody listened. I got a lot more to say about BC history, but I'm getting cold. But I kind of wanted to show you the parliament buildings. And, you know, they were originally the governor's own land scandal, James Bay. And it's a neighborhood I'd love to live in, actually. It's beautiful old houses. I think Emily Carr's house is over there. Uh, funky old, you know, Queen Anne. And people come in, oh, you know, they're imitating. Well, no, we didn't imitate San Francisco. San Francisco moved here in 1858, wholesale. And also Yale. And not so much, though. That was more multi ethnic, though. Anyways, uh, I love this spot. I used to work down here. But I gotta go get a bus and some food and back to my friend's place and into town and try and do what I came over here to do, which is get the red drop and meet the Green Party leader and the things that I'd like to do that I came over here and go to housing outreach. So wish me well, everybody out there, send me some love. I need more love. I got some bad energy on this trip, right? It's like friction when you're climbing, trying to do something good, you start getting the friction holding you back. Send me some love, I need more power. All the people who give me love, 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 thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll get this posted. i go home. Okay? Good night. Skookum 1, signing off. Tree Professor. From the beautiful Inner Harbor here in Victoria.